Hi, welcome to Author's Note. Don't like, don't listen. My name is Cass. And my name is Tease. I have a cold, so if I sound <laughs> a little snotty or a little coffee or you happen to hear something clicking around in my mouth, it's from a cough drop, and I won't say the brand name because they're not sponsoring us, <laughs> but if our guest would like me to build them a furnished miniature home out of cough drop wrappers i probably could at this point after what has happened to me this week oh thank you i really appreciate it can you build me one i don't have that many okay. wait till i get sick again okay and then I'll, Sounds good. I'll make you one okay <laughs> <laughs> we are joined today by the wonderful carter hello that's me that's you hello. that's you fantastic carter what have you been enjoying this week well, I'm glad you asked, because uh, I started the visual novel Higarashi back in June and finished yesterday. <laughs> wow, congratulations! Exa- exactly nine months. So That's, that's <laughs> how long it's going to take me to finish Dune, don't worry. <laughs> that's how long it takes for a human baby to be born. Exactly, I feel like I just wow. had one. It's fantastic. Uh, it, <laughs> it took me... Ex- Higarashi, like having a baby. Exactly. <laughs> That, that's the tagline for the VN. My friend bought it for me, and I didn't know how long it was at the time, so I was like, yeah, sure. And then I was like, cool, this is three times the length of War and Peace. So that's fun. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Homestuck <laughs> trained you for that. Is it actually, though? Yes. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't so know. Much. Like The first chapter was so long, so I looked up the word count, and it's three times the length of War and Peace. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> About little anime kids killing. It's fun. Go read it. Oh, no. Go do it. Look up the triggers first. Would you recommend it? I would absolutely recommend it. (laughs) Does the dog die? A lot of things do happen. Please look up triggers, but I think it is a fantastic VN. I think I recommend it to literally anybody that likes horror. It's fantastic. Please look up triggers. (laughs) Tees, have you been enjoying anything this week? No. Pew pew, no. Um, <laughs> pew pew, Molkar ended this week. Okay, pay it the respect no. it deserves. It's Pooey Pooey. Is it really? Yeah, it's Pooey Pooey. Sorry, my bad. That's the um, little hamster cars, right? They're guinea pigs, but okay, yeah, guinea sorry. Pigs. How dare you? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm canceling it's, the episode. They're guinea pigs. I'm sorry it's to guinea delightful. pigs everywhere. I'm so excited. Like, I'm so happy that we got to watch it. Cass and I have been watching it each week, slowly but surely, and... Molkar just, Monday. Molkar Monday, baby. That's been getting me through the week. So, that, that's what I've been up to besides that. I've just been watching my friends stream videoed games. My friends play Guilty Gear every week. Oh, that's the gamer so, game. Yeah, so I've been watching Guilty Gear, but that's it. I, didn't, I haven't watched anything this week, really. But what about you, Cass? Anything new? Not really. Okay. I, I mean, I know that... <laughs> I've spent, That's it. <laughs> I've spent like a lot of the week just like in bed Aww. and I'm also saving the one thing I finished so we could talk about it next week when it's a little bit more pertinent. I okay. mean, I watched Molkar. Yeah, we watched Molkar. That's it. I hung out with my cat a lot. Yes. Um, I don't really got anything other than that. I'm reading a book, but once more, I'm trapped in the prison of my own rules and cannot talk about it till I'm done with it. It's okay. I, I finished the first part of book one of Dune today. I guess I could say that. Wait, how long is Dune? <laughs> so I'm reading it on my how phone. How big is the desert? So I'm reading it on my phone. And according to my books app on my phone, it is 1,037 pages. Mm-hmm. I am currently on 392 and the and book, that's like an inflated number too because it's yeah, on your phone so it's gotta yeah. make the pages smaller yeah yeah it, it definitely does so i'm gonna assume it's maybe about like a 800 page 600 page book ish 412 412 <laughs> that's, you must have like a really big typeface on your phone <laughs> that's so that close to fake. the number right ooh, ooh, one one number off from God's special number. No. Number. I, I was like, 412? That's not one number <laughs> off from 420. Y'all are talking about an infinitely more cursed number that we will not address. Oh, Thank sorry. you very much. Oh, boy, Kaz. One day. One day we're going to have to talk about it. You don't know what sins I've committed. I refuse to read Homestuck. I physically can't read Homestuck. Don't. It's too bright and it hurts my eyes. 
Yeah, that one's fair. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. I wake up every morning. I'm 80 years old. I have to put in eye drops. I go to my stupid little job and look at a screen all day. I, can't, I don't have time for Homestuck. Oh, I literally had to get glasses because of how much I was on the computer. Higurashi <laughs> wow. my eyes. Wow. Class action lawsuit against... Andrew what's his Hussey. name? Andrew Hussey. <laughs> Carter, would you like to tell us and our wonderful Burmese a little bit about yourself? Oh, I absolutely would. So I am a filmmaker. I just graduated college <laughs> last May. <laughs> so that's Yay! congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I really loved uh, immediately switching to online school in the middle of my last semester. Actually, that's a fun mm-hmm. fact. Uh, COVID lockdown started the week after I finished my film shoot. So, Thank God. Yeah. Oh, that's incredibly A lot of people well. in my major God. didn't even get to finish, like, their films. It Oof. really sucked. Awful. But that's terrible. Because of that, I haven't had access to facilities, so I'm still editing it. <laughs> no. Oh. But And that's rough. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's really rough. But whatever. Like, I, it's a good film. It's going to get made someday. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm like still making it, but it's, it's, it's in the works. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Uh, editing is what I'm here to talk about, actually, because... Uh, a fun fact about me is the reason why I became a filmmaker in the first place is because I made a lot of AMVs as a child. I love that. <laughs> I feel like I'm looking in like an alternative timeline because I know in the last episode I talked about how I was really into film, like even as a young kid, and I like wanted to be a filmmaker, but I just never kept doing it. <laughs> so, Are you saying yeah. Carter is who you could have been? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Carter had the drive while I didn't, so Carter's the real winner here. Literally. Now, Carter, did you ever have a digital blue camera? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the fun thing, too, is I don't even own a camera. I didn't even, like, decide to be a filmmaker. It just kind of happened. Obsessed. I love that. <laughs> it was just, like, uh, I started making AMVs. Uh, the first AMV I ever made was uh, a Courtney Total Drama Island fan art slideshow that I made, yes. not even in Windows Movie Maker, but on this website called one true media which was like a slideshow website that had like a stupid little intro to every single video you make i watched it and it brought me back so many memories of seeing that one true media (laughs) i forgot about the existence of one true media (laughs) until i clicked through and watched this and was like a part of my brain that has been locked away for a very long time awakened and (laughs) crawled to the forefront grabbed my pituitary gland and it suffocated me oh wow okay that's extreme <laughs> like you're right though because i watched like so many of my old videos in preparation for this and i was like oh i'm 12 i'm 12 oh. again okay great <laughs> but, oh, I, I don't think i mentioned but it was to the song animal i have become by three days grace which is a classic yeah absolutely classic amv song i thought it was super cool and original when i got a three days grace album my mom was really excited because she thought it was christian rock oh my god that was one thing i was even gonna bring up is i got into so much (laughs) christian rock from amvs oh my god like like so many amvs use flyleaf and then i was like this band is awesome i'm gonna edit with it forever and i (laughs) I got older i'm like they talk about jesus so much Oh my god. You know what happened with the lead singer of Flyleaf? She was a lesbian yeah. and then like she, she had that the gay car away. crash. And she oh, prayed no. the gay away. No. Yeah, no. she literally like no. she had a girlfriend and left her and found Jesus instead and then formed Flyleaf. Okay. I have What a beef. lose for the gays, honestly. Yeah. I have some beef with how Flyleaf talks about Jesus. <laughs> It's a little sexual sometimes, uh-huh. but you know what? That's not even exclusive to Flyleaf. If you listen to most like Christian rock songs, it's like yeah. But that's what- you uh you have some very intimate feelings about your contact with um Mr. Jesus. Yeah, that's what JC. makes them such good AMV songs though, is because people who were thirteen mm-hmm. did not know they were about Jesus, and they were like, "Cool, <laughs> I can edit Yowie to this. That's perfect." Like, when you go to church and they play Flyleaf and you're like, what? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. I just started editing as a hobby and then I did it a lot because I was in sixth grade and I just like discovered anime and stuff and no knew nobody who liked it. So my in was like, mm-hmm. oh, before even anime, I was editing Total Drama Island videos, 
for like three years. I was so obsessed with it. I had two separate YouTube accounts just I'm dedicated obsessed. to Total Drama Island AMVs. Now, how do you feel about Lashana Ball OC? I feel great about <laughs> Lashana Ball OC. She is my girl. <laughs> I love Lashana Ball. Don't even get me. This is going to turn into a Total Drama Island episode if you make me talk about Lashana because her elimination and then I just start crying. <laughs> Unfair. Oh, no. Unfair. <laughs> we are not going to talk about this, but I too have total drama island feelings because I watched it two years ago. I would actually no, that's not two years ago. Maybe even more. But like, I would get home from working at Joanne Fabric, and then as I was eating my dinner, I would watch an episode of Total Drama Island at like midnight. Oh. So Carter has joined us today not to talk about Total Drama Island, <laughs> unfortunately or to, fortunately, though. depending on who you are, <laughs> but to take a little bit of a, of a deeper dive into AMVs and sort of the culture surrounding them, because as you mentioned, Carter, you were quite prolific in the AMV scene. Yeah, I edited for, uh, let's see like 16 years i edited amvs like all through like the end of elementary school right up until i started college because literally i know the reason why i stopped was like hey i just got into college maybe i should do adult stuff now (laughs) which like (laughs) amvs can be adult (laughs) exactly i was like there's tons of adults who still make amvs i go back and i want to make amvs like it's Do fun. It. Like I get Do ideas. It. I'll be in the shower, like listening to music, and I'm like, I'm imagining a full scale AMV right now. <laughs> Do it. I want all of your AMVs from here on out to come in the description section with. I have a degree in this. <laughs> oh, literally. You know, that's actually the worst part about ha- being an AMV maker is that I have so many years of editing experience behind me. But if anybody asks about it, I have to be like, Yeah, I edited this free AMV. When I was 15, can you look at it and pretend it's not anime? <laughs> oh my god. So oh. it's like, I, I haven't put it into, like, I can't put it into any of my professional portfolios and stuff. So I'm like, here's three you films You could if I you made. weren't a coward. Yeah, exactly. I, the lesson of this episode is that I'm going to stop being a coward. <laughs> I believe in you. Listen, I'm exposing so much right now. Total Drum Island's just one step into it. Yeah, so over uh, 16 years, I did a full count through all of my YouTube channels, and one is locked, so I had to kind of guesstimate. So mm-hmm. the final tally I came to was 275 AMVs. Oh my god. Possibly 50 more that I didn't post, because I know there were a ton I made for people, but didn't actually post on my channels. Did you take, like, AMV commissions? Was that a thing? No, I don't think I ever took money for any videos ever. I'd make, like, gifts for people, but I wouldn't, like... Mm. And the thing is, too, it takes so much time. Like, I would get Mm -hmm. home from school, sit at my computer for eight hours, just editing 15 seconds. Jesus. So it was, like, honestly... What a labor of love. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I would not do that work without pay today, trust me. I, I Film editing completely. is intensive. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. You know, you've gone <laughs> to college for it, but it's intensive. Yeah. It's not just slapping a bunch of little things together and going, okay, done. Yeah, exactly. And especially like the kind of editing I would do was like, uh, I want to talk about the different styles of AMVs because you guys did a really good yeah. overview last uh, for last week's episode. But I just like, I have so much to talk about about editing styles. I'm such a nerd about it take the no rings. i love this. go wild go for please. it please we will follow but uh the kind of style i would do would be to edit fan art and have like the fan art move which took a lot of masking if you guys know what that is mm-hmm. like i know you mm-hmm. mentioned rotoscoping yeah. last week which is basically the same thing but mm-hmm. uh, i edited mostly in sony vegas which if you tell people that they laugh at you also and i'm like hey it's kind of a program <laughs> <laughs> i remember that kind of being like All the AMVs that I saw as a kid that I was really, really impressed by, almost always it was that they were coming out of Sony Vegas. So, like, I don't don't have any personal experience with editing software outside of, like, iMovie, Premiere, and After Effects now. Yeah. Um, So I don't know what Sony Vegas is like, but, I mean, a lot of people were creating really impressive stuff with that. It's mainly used for just, like, effects, which is why it's so good for making AMVs. Because it has, like, this giant effect library. Like, I don't have it on this computer, so I couldn't open and even check it out. But, like, it comes with anything you would possibly need to make, Mm -hmm. like, move. Uh, After Effects is definitely a better program for it. It's easier to follow, and it's more technical. 
but like mm-hmm. i have such a soft spot for sony vegas especially since i like pirated it three times and that was hard work <laughs> so <laughs> Like, After Effects, I can just buy. I'm like, no, I need to pirate Sony oh Vegas. I'm 14. God. I don't need money. <laughs> yeah, I really love this program. Mostly because I had to spend so much time pirating it. <laughs> I literally, there's, I think I have three different versions of Vegas, too. Because my dad kept finding out I was pirating software and would yell at me, so I'd pirate different oh software. Oh my god, what a narc. <laughs> oh my god, cringe. Yeah, absolutely. Can't believe dad's a capitalist. I know, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he would get so mad at me too because uh, uh, I would like. It's not nuke. What are they gonna do? Sue you? Uh, he's in the music industry, and I would download. Oh like, no! Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, uh, understandable. <laughs> yeah, uh, he would get really mad at me because every time I made an AMV, I would steal the music from YouTube and like rip it off those like YouTube to MP3 sites, and then I'd get like a five-hour <laughs> lecture about like, hey, where did all this music on your computer come from? Like, oh, I bought oh, it no. illegally. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I bought it on the iTunes store for 99 cents a pot. You got $500 worth of music in one day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but the, the rest of my, like, AMV history, like, I got so into editing that I realized, um, just one day it kind of came to me that I was like, oh, a music video editor is a job. I could do this mm-hmm. as a job someday. It's like a hot, like, mm-hmm. I thought it was just like, oh, cool, I can make silly Hitalia AMVs. He, he, he. But I started getting kind of serious about it after that. Uh, I went to a summer camp that, like, focused on, like, multimedia stuff. And then I Mm. went to a vocational school instead of a regular high school for multimedia and film. And there I got into film and theater, which I didn't really do either beforehand. I just thought I wanted to be on the technical side of things. And Mm -hmm. I really fell in love with film because of that. I made two short films in high school. And then uh, that's how I got into college. I actually, at my... um. We had to sit down and be interviewed by the film professors when I went to my college. And I actually mm-hmm. showed him a few of my AMVs just to show him, like, hey, <laughs> I can edit. And also, this one is less embarrassing than the other ones. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I love that, though. I think that's so important because, like, it, it's one thing to, like, have the technical skill. But especially with AMVs, again, like T said, it is such a labor of love. Mm-hmm. Like, it comes from a place of just pure enjoyment. You're not doing it for a school assignment. You're doing it in your free time because you enjoy it. And, like, that in and of itself is such a magical aspect that comes with any sort of skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know for me, I didn't have, like, I've had a lot of AMVs that have gotten, like, pretty popular. Nothing, like... There's only one thing that was really fandom worthy that like a lot of people recognized, which was um, when I was in Homestuck fandom, uh, there was like this one uh, week where people were drawing a lot of fan art, like pretending that Homestuck was an anime. And it became mm-hmm. this really popular meme to like trick people into thinking it. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was the first person who made like an anime opening with all that fan art. Wow. And I'm so Hell sad. Yeah. Because it blew up to the point where, like, I could go to any Homestuck meetup, and if I mentioned it, everyone would suddenly be like, whoa, you made the Homestuck anime opening? Which is really nice. Like, people immediately, like, recognized it and knew what it was. Mm -hmm. But it got taken down on YouTube because I used copyrighted music. (laughs) No! Foolish. (laughs) Foolish. (laughs) I literally just grabbed some random Japanese track, too, because I didn't want to, like, pick, like, an actual anime opening. It turns out that it was an actual anime opening. I just had never heard of Um. Sengoku Basara. So I was like, oh, I got comments about it every single day. Like, huh, nice, Goku Basara. And I'm like, huh, I don't know. I don't know what that what? is. <laughs> Actually, this is Homestuck Anime Opening 5. I don't know what you're talking about. But it got capped at uh, 78,000 views, which was the I most popular that. anything Damn. I've made has gotten. And I'm still so mad that it got DMCA strike today. <laughs> so, but, eh, it's, I, it's always our Homestuck. It's always the Homestuck. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, actually, from that, I kind of fostered a relationship with one of the judges at the Anime Next uh, AMV contest. Uh, His name Mm -hmm. is Peter. He's a really, really nice guy. And I got into the contest two years. Uh, One year, I made it as a finalist in the, uh, I think it was the creative category. I don't really remember, because it was when I was, like, 14. And I edited fan art to, like, uh, all those, like, RPG horror games, uh, Mm -hmm. which definitely I could tell was throwing people in the crowd off, but whatever. (laughs) And then I made the next year. I made a Madoka AMV, which only got semi uh, semi finalist. But God, I miss anime 
uh, AMV competitions. I haven't been to one Do in it. so long. Do the it. second I go to a con, I'm just sitting in that theater and just basking in everybody's editing. That's literally how I'm feeling. Like, I was talking to friends after recording the episode, and I was just like, once cons come back, like, this has to happen. Like, I need to, like, I don't, masquerades are always, like, exhausting for me. <laughs> but, like, I love AMV contests. I'm like, I'm going to start going to AMV contests again. I'm going to start going to panels more. And I was like, I, I feel like I always usually appreciate it. Artist Alley. But, like, I only usually go to, like, one or two panels a year at a con. I'm like, no. I, I'm going to start going to more panels. And like, 2022 is the year Tease goes to every appreciation panel in the world. Tease shows up at your con and just absolutely utilizes their badge for once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. I always just go to the artist alley. I'm like, no, I'm going to every single thing I see. I need to see people. <laughs> Yup, that's how I feel. Catch me sitting behind my booth, trapped forever in the artist alley. Oh, it's I like also feel that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Carter, you also table. I All do. my friends can do art, except for Tease. Yeah. Tease can do art. Tease can draw a seagull and paint. That's it. That's art. Thank that's you. art, bitch. <laughs> Don't is. devalue yourself. Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> that was actually something I even wrote too is I think that making AMVs actually made me a better artist because like the type of style yeah. I did with like moving art a lot of the time I would mm. have to go and edit it in my paint programs and it mm. made me like just appreciate other people's art more and like learn mm -hmm. like techniques that people did and especially yeah. too if I was like cleaning any like manga or anything like I learned all these features in my programs that I never figured out how to use on my own and then mm -hmm. yada yada from there on that's really cool. It's, a, it's amazing how those skills, whether we intend for them to or not, play into each other so yeah. easily, you know, without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I feel like a lot of uh, just art and editing, like, really intertwine just super, super well. Like, a lot of, like, the programs, just, like, all the buttons and functions between. Like, if you can't tell, I'm very self-taught with everything I do, which was not a really good thing for film school because, like, with editing programs, you have to know every single thing about every single thing you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to fuck up your edit. But, like, with Sony Vegas, I was like, cool, I'm going to make up words for every single button in my head, and that's what they mean. I love that. But I know the main thing I really wanted to talk about with AMVs is just kind of the cultural shift they've had from, like, the early 2000s until now. Yeah. Because uh, just from being there mm -hmm. for, like, 16 years, and now from I don't make them anymore, but I still watch them, like, I've seen a lot of different, obviously, mm -hmm. changes. It's been, like, 20 years of fandom that I've been looking at. Yeah. And uh, a lot of that has specifically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do with YouTube itself and how YouTube has changed. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, the platform has changed so drastically that it has been impossible for the community involved in it on any level with whatever media they're engaging with to not change as well yeah absolutely mm -hmm. i used to rp on youtube like you can't do that nowadays exactly that was literally a like the main point i wanted to talk about was the community that used to be on youtube and where that community yeah. might be today before i get into that specifically i just wanted to go over like some very like typical things with amvs in like older youtube mm -hmm which a lot of them still apply today, but these are the things you'd really, really see back in, like, 2006, 2010. Mm -hmm. So the programs that were mostly used were, like, Windows Movie Maker. I love those slideshows. Uh, they hold such a dear <laughs> place in my heart. And those, like, slideshow websites like One True Media. <laughs> Sony Vegas, another beautiful place in my pirated heart. And I, people always pirated these, like, sparkle effect programs also, which were, like, I don't remember the names of any of them, but you would, like, make your own graphics, then export them so that you weren't just stealing random graphics online. But also, that was what everyone did anyway. A lot of yeah. stealing <laughs> in old AMVs. Probably still today, but uh, I feel like it was more rampant back in the day. Yeah. And After Effects was definitely mm -hmm. used then, too, but I think it's a lot more, like, the program now than it, like, Sony Vegas was definitely, like, the dominating program in old YouTube, which, if yeah. nobody knows what I'm talking about here, that part was just for me, so... <laughs> Well, did Sony Vegas come pre-installed on any computers or something? No, Do you know about you that? Because I know that that has like a huge part of 
kind of affecting how buy it, I'm pretty sure. people get attached to these softwares in their own weird way. Yeah, like with Windows mm. Movie Maker, that was the thing that came with your computer. I don't know, iMovie yeah. comes with Macs, too, if I'm correct. Hell yeah. Yeah, so those are the programs that people would usually flock mm-hmm. to because they didn't have to pay for them, which is why they were so mm-hmm. rampant in earlier YouTube. But now there's so many mm-hmm. tutorials on, like, here's how to pirate After Effects that these kids are like, cool, here's all these cool transitions I'm going to make. <laughs> you definitely shouldn't look up Adobe Z- ZII on Reddit. Don't do that. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. You can't see me winking because this is a podcast. <laughs> it's an audio medium, but we are winking. The part that is the most near and dear to my heart is all of the old AMV tropes and all the different types of AMVs. Because, like, mm-hmm. I think anybody that watches AMVs can pick up, like, different types of editing styles. And they can pick different kinds of favorites. Like, we all know the classic, like, Naruto Lincoln Park AMV. Like, a lot of people, <laughs> when they think of AMVs, that's the first thing they think of. And I'm like, that was such, like, a minority of what was actually out there. <laughs> And it's always the Naruto and Sasuke mm-hmm. fight, like the oh, one yeah. that was done by that one <laughs> animator. Who, it's like absolutely phenomenal. They're fighting on the water. It, it's always scenes from that one. And like, who can blame you? It's a great. It's a great scene. It looks great with any Linkin Park music layered over it. Yeah, literally. I actually forgot to put this in my notes. I used to pretend that I watched Naruto when I was making AMVs because I watched so many Naruto AMVs that I could talk to people about Naruto. Because I was like... Have you never seen any Naruto? I watched, like, three episodes. Fake fan? Yeah, wow. I used, to, Taste. I used to pretend that... Iconic. It was fantastic. Carter like, I had, like, <laughs> it was so deep that people would make me Naruto AMBs, like, as gifts. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I love this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's great it was my favorite <laughs> it was literally just because i wanted to ship naruto and sasuke and i wanted to be like i need to have rights to do this <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's valid i get that i get that <laughs> yeah so for everyone that made me a naruto AMV, i'm sorry this is my this is my call out post you're a liar yeah you're a liar and a, and a fraud. I am. I'm a fraud. Carter is a fraud. You they're going to take your. They're going to take your degree back, Carter. <laughs> they can have it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, uh, I wanted to talk about the different types of like editing in AMVs. I can include this list that you have because it's it's really well done in our in yeah. our show notes for people to check out as well. Solid. I watched all of these this morning yeah. and got really really nostalgic, so that was really fun. <laughs> Yay! There is a magic of AMVs to just transport you back to your childhood. Yeah, and a lot of these too, like, uh, mm-hmm. for this specific section, like, I picked a lot of older AMVs that aren't really mm-hmm. technically as impressive as, like, AMVs that went best in show, but they were AMVs mm-hmm. that meant a lot to me when I was a kid, and they were the things that, like, mm-hmm. really inspired me to edit. Oh. So I was like, mm-hmm. no, I'm, I'm making you guys watch these ones. <laughs> good. No, I paced I love through that. them, that's and, like, good. a lot of them are still really impressive, though. I mean, that's the thing. Oh, it's absolutely. Just, Especially, like, the later ones. You feel ones. when someone loves something. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. uh, the first one, obviously, is, like, traditional AMVs, which are just, like, you do not use any effects. You're just cutting to music. And a lot of times that's used for, like, oh, yeah, shonen anime fights. Or, like, uh, the one I picked out was, like, a comedy video. We're like, oh, you're mm-hmm. just layering it over people talking or something. The iconic Hurt Feelings in yeah. the Genesis Evangelion AMV. Yeah. Man, I was searching so hard for a traditional AMV, too. I was like, what's a good one? And I was like, Hurt Feelings got my back. <laughs> 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 and then very similar to that is a raw AMV, which I don't like that name. But it's like, it's an AMV that is supposed to look traditional, but is affected if that makes any sense. Mm. So the only effects that they use in it are, like, flashes, swipes, zooms, no, like, heavy coloration, no graphics. And even then, like, some AMVs do do those things, too, and it's still raw. They just do it in a way that's, like, you kind of don't even notice them. Mm. It's definitely where the affecting is supposed to, like, be Mm -hmm. in the background, and you're really not supposed to even understand that the video is edited. (laughs) You're just like, it's wow, like this the looks no cool. makeup makeup mm-hmm. look for AMVs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that one I think actually is one of the most impressive to really do right because it's yeah. like it's a such a specific style and trying to make it look good at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to make it look that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And on the complete other end of that is candy AMVs, which are the ones that like 
you super, super heavy motion graphics, lots of affecting. They're usually uh, typical with like very uh, pop music, like Katy Perry, like uh, all that kind of everything. I say that because every single Candy AMV was like a Katy Perry song back in like 2011. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but lots of. Well, be- I think because <laughs> they're so tied with motion graphics, right? Is that like they almost have to be super high energy to like really kind of keep you engaged and show off all those like really amazing effects that people are doing, you know? Oh, absolutely. And those are always like very heavily masked. A lot of people will use like giant outlines around the characters and a lot of text. Mm-hmm. All of these are very text heavy too. Like text editing is like just a great style in its own right. Anybody that can do really good yeah. text edits, because I look back at a lot of my AMVs and I have so many typos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that. like the era of internet before lyrics were readily accessible online, and like people mm-hmm. were making lyric videos based on how they heard the song, and you just ended up with things where it's like, that is oh, not Jesus. what was said. <laughs> like the legend of the penis. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Daft Punk. Rest in peace, Daft Punk. Pour one out. Oy. The next type I have is the kind that I really like to do which is just, like, heavy manipulation of images. It's I, if They call it VFX, but I'd call it more of, like, a collage style because it, mm-hmm. it really feels like you're just taking... Because you're not editing to, like, what's actually happening in a certain scene. A lot of these type of AMVs are, like, I'm going to mask out just random parts of every episode and just kind of... Mm-hmm. Or, like, of characters, of manga panels, of, like, fan art and make my own story to go along with the song and just Mm -hmm. really manipulating everything. Mm -hmm. So I I kind of see these more as, like, Mm -hmm. a creative art form than just, like, a traditional video edit. Like, they feel like they're Mm -hmm. making their own piece separate from, like, the canon that they're taking it from. Yeah. I do not know the name for this type of uh, AMV, but I'm going to call it Vegas style, because if anybody's ever seen an AMV that's just like, yeah, this was edited (laughs) in sunny Vegas... Where you just drag them. Yeah, you just slap every single effect Sony Vegas has on all of your footage and just like manipulate it the hell and back. And it's just like, well, this has flashing. Oh, yeah, that's also one thing. I'm going to put like an epilepsy warning on some of these because, especially with like the Vegas style kind of AMVs, they used flashing so much. Yeah, they <laughs> really do. Yeah. Just like color and just like everything everywhere they're kind of they're such a mess that there's like a charm in it like when you see really ugly anime drawings and you're like oh like th- that's how this feels to me i i, I really love uh sony vegas style because you can just tell somebody just got the program and they're just so excited to be editing and they're like hey look what i can do Boy. carter i have a challenge for you yes could you somehow make <laughs> a hyper long amv that included every single Vegas effect in it? Yes. And those already exist. I'm challenging you to do it. I'll do it. Don't even (laughs) test me. I'm challenging you. Do it. It will look bad, but I will do it, and it will come from my No, I believe in you. You have a degree, Carter. You can make it look good. (laughs) If Zack Snyder can release a four-hour long movie, you can do this. Hey, uh, the best thing about being a film major is that like I don't know anything about movies so people kept talking about the Snyder Cut and I don't know what the hell they were talking about I'm like oh some guy made a lot it (laughs) makes me so angry (laughs) I just solidarity the fact that it's four fucking hours the audacity this isn't technically a specific style but you talked about MMVs last time I love Mm -hmm. MMVs so much I think they take so much creative effort like this is a lot like the collage style I was talking about too but this is just uh the manga and people put so much yeah. effort into it. Cass, when you were talking about the painted panels, I like <sighs> flash back to so many AMVs where like specifically like fairy tale ones where people would like painstakingly paint all of the frames and like give them mm-hmm. blush and everything. And I was like, that must have taken wow. five hundred hours and you made this a three minute video. How did you do yeah. this? <laughs> Well, and, like, the the thing, too, right, is, like, you inherently get sort of a divorce between a manga and an anime because animes cannot, like, they just, they don't have the budget yeah. more often than not to match the intricacy of art in a manga. So, like, mm-hmm. I totally understand the appeal of a manga music video because, like, you are trying to bring this thing that has 
in some cases, such a different style into, I mean, like, before we got Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, right, like, the anime for Full Metal Alchemist and the manga were so completely different. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. in every aspect. So, like, especially for a property like that, I can absolutely see why fans would want to take this flat visual style and really bring it into something that's moving and really propelled by... I just think it's incredible. And the amount of time it takes. Oh, labor of love. Yeah, I'm actually really glad you brought up the anime part of it because part of the reason I especially like to work with, like, manga and art rather than anime is because anime mm -hmm. also has shots in it. Anime is already edited. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. the shots would... It, I can't tell you how many times I would sit down to edit an AMV and then a shot would be exactly one second less than how long I, I needed it to be cut for. Yeah. So that's why you get so many AMVs that's where they'll like slow down the footage or something. Or like. Yeah, and then the frame rate stutters and it doesn't look quite right and yeah. it seems a little bit out of place and it's like, mm, no. Exactly. <laughs> I got so good at trying to time things because of like shots doing that that I was like, hey, I'm going to make yeah. my own timing actually. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so that's, like, what makes, like, MMB so good, too, is because the person who is making the video has full creative control over what it looks like also. Yeah, and I mean, like, a manga, essentially, with the way action breaks down in comics, you essentially have, like, a storyboard in, in some fashion where it's, yeah. like, you're mm -hmm. seeing all those key moments and movements and expression changes, and now you just get to control at what pace they have. Oh, fantastic. Incredible. Love it. You love to see it. You love <laughs> to hear about it. It just makes me so happy. Oh. Yeah, it was so hard, like, narrowing down just one pick because I have, like, a thousand MMBs saved. They're so good. Mm -hmm. They're so beautiful. I love them so much. Uh, and the last one I had for, like, the more, like, pre-2010 AMVs was just comedy and parody, which can technically be in any of those categories anyway. Like, uh, they can use, like, traditional. They can use very heavy motion graphics. Like, I have mm -hmm. this one saved that's, like, a parody advertisement for Fanta with, like, Izaya Orihara from Dorara. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But then there's like uh, Tamaki Gay or European, which is a complete traditional edit, but it's still like comedy parody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And honestly, like with all <laughs> these different things. <laughs> Does Soup Store count as comedy and parody? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Soup> <laughs> I mean, it must. AMB, that's, that's, that's a debate. I don't know if Soup Store is an AMV. I mean, well, it's not music, but it is an audio file. It's important to True. me, but I don't know if it's an AMV. It's culturally important. Yeah. <laughs> It's a cultural touch world story. heritage poke. World, I'm at Sue. world heritage poke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. But with editing too, it's like it's all down to each editor's style because I follow so yeah. many editors that edit in pretty much all of these, and they're fantastic in each and every one. Like it's all about yeah. the pacing, what music you choose, what graphics you do. If you do anime, what kind of length is it? Like I mostly edited things under one minute because three minute AMVs made me want to die. They take so long. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like, yeah, styles tend to overlap and editors usually do multiple different styles and they're beautiful. I love, there's, I actually noticed when I was going through these AMVs that there's a few of these categories that I used like the same editor for like three different examples. And I was like, maybe I should do it less. I'm like, no, this editor is really good. Oh, they interesting. It. But that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I also wanted to talk about like the music that was used because like so mm -hmm. many people associate A and B's with just Linkin Park. I'm gonna say Linkin Park a thousand times. I love them. I love them so much. They're not the only A and B band. We got the main. No, they're not. Everyone edited with the main. Literally, if you edited any kind of romance A and B in 2006, it is with <laughs> the main or Mariana Trench. <laughs> Mariana Trench is a close second. There were... This is Breaking Benjamin erasure. Okay, Breaking Benjamin did have a lot of fame. <laughs> One in particular I wanted to talk about so bad because nobody seems to remember this but me, but every single Yaoi AMV used Simon Curtis because he's gay and made, like, electronic, like, dark pop music, and they were, like, perfect. I've never heard of Simon Put Curtis. gay porn over it. I probably would know what oh Simon God. Curtis Oh, my God. Super Psycho Love. Made? Nope. Uh, nothing okay. to me. Someone who's listening to this is like, thank you, Carter. Thank you for seeing me. It's you. It's you listening back to this episode. It's you. It is me. <laughs> Literally, it was so popular that even like, like people who made like giant collaborations, like would like specifically be like, okay, you can only use Simon Curtis songs in this if you're making like a Yaoi AMV. Oh my god. Oh his my music god. Would work so well for it. And I'm gonna talk about Yaoi AMVs later too. But 
Well, you know, <laughs> it comes back, I think, to that point you made about timing when you're working with anime. When you're working with electronica music, right, there's so many different aspects to that music that you can edit on, whether you want to edit it on, like, the bass line or the beat or the rhythm or the melody or what have you. I'm not mm-hmm. a music person, so if my language is overlapping there or eh, lacking, I apologize. But, like, <laughs> but there's so many different parts that you can edit to that, like, when you don't have a super long sequence, like, you're able to cut through really quickly or keep coming back to stuff. Oh. Oh yeah, I just, they were like, I realized over time that uh, like anything electronic that had like a really fast pace going to it was perfect because I used yeah. to edit to the lyrics and then it would look mm-hmm. bad because I'm not editing mm-hmm. to the beat. And I'm like, hey, but I'm cutting mm-hmm. on the things that they're saying. Moving on to that, I wanted to talk about uh, collaboration and the anime community on YouTube because I think mm-hmm. that the AMV community on YouTube back then was just really, really booming. Like it, feel, it felt a lot more... Uh, it felt like there was a lot more of a community then than there is now, and a lot of that is because yeah. of changes with YouTube, which I'll get into. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to talk yeah. about... I actually wanted to ask you guys specifically if you've ever heard of any of these, like, from watching AMVs. Like, I feel like this one's more obvious, but do you guys know what a collab is? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's just obvious. It's an AMV between some friends. They're like, hey, we like this song. Let's put some pictures together. Bam, we made a friendship AMV. Well, I also heard of collabs in the context of, like, multiple people getting together to all make AMVs under, like, one greater umbrella theme. Oh, and, like, yeah. like, that was, like, a collaboration project. Ooh, I'm gonna get into that one, too. But, uh... Oh, okay. Do you guys know what a MEP is? Yes. I just learned what Multi-editor was. <laughs> project. Yeah, baby! I loved MEPs. Most... I made, like, two, what I say, 275 AMVs, probably more. Mm-hmm. At least 150 of those were met parts. Ooh. Because I joined so wow. many of them, because they were really easy to edit, too, because usually you'd only get, like, a segment anywhere between, like, 10 and 30 seconds. Mm. And oh, that's pretty nice. I didn't explain it, but it's basically, uh, like, a user or, like, a group will post a song and, like, kind of like a calling card and, like, show you the different parts, like, oh, here's the first 10 seconds, here's the second 10 seconds. And you comment and be like, oh, hey, can I have part two? They send you the music, you edit whatever to it and give it back to them. And they edit a giant collaboration with a ton of users who might not even know each other. That's really cool. Interesting. Yeah. I wondered how that worked. Yeah. Usually it would be like a person would just post like a still image of an anime character and it would be like, cool, join my map. Thanks. <laughs> usually they were based on either like a theme or a specific series, or some of them were like a just specific style of editing. Like, oh, we want to make a candy map only apply if you do candy style. And some maps were like free. Anybody could do them. And some were really, really selective, which was, of course, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they only wanted the best editors possible or like, oh, I only want you if you do this style. Carter, can you tell me what a worm is? It's a little guy that lives in the dirt, and I love him. <laughs> but also, I actually, I couldn't find what the acronym means, but a worm... What is worm? No, yeah. What is worm? <laughs> hey, what's a worm? Uh, a worm <laughs> is a map, but the, the people who are editing it use different songs. So instead of one song being cut up and given to a bunch of different people, what it would usually be is, like, the person would give a theme, or it would usually be based on a specific series, and say, like, hey, we're making a soul eater worm. So just... Uh, we want it to be all Soul and Maka. Just edit whatever Soul and Maka video you want to make. Just make it be 15 seconds. Interesting. And sometimes they didn't even do like a seconds like time limit. I know I've watched somewhere it's like one part was like 20 seconds and then one part was like 45. And it's like, wow, this part's going on for a little bit. Uh-huh. Those ones are usually more for like the fun of it than they are for like we're trying to make a really cool video. It's more like, hey, we just really, really like this thing and I want everybody to talk about this specific topic. Which I didn't see though. Huh. They definitely weren't as popular as BEPS because they didn't flow together that well. Because n- yeah. usually what would happen <laughs> is no one would talk about the songs they were using. <laughs> so none of the music <laughs> flowed together whatsoever. Oh, no. Yeah, I was immediately... Because, like, you already have that issue of sort of the the continuity or the visual language being disjointed with a MEP, but I can imagine with a worm, it gets even more... (laughs) Oof. Oh, yeah. And with uh, with MEPs, too, some people who didn't really know how to audio edit sometimes, what they would do is, like, uh, they would let each individual person set their own audio level, 
and then not put no. the track under it. So there's some maps no. that like the audio just changes all the way throughout. Oh no! I would walk 500 <laughs> miles, and I would walk 500 more. Literally, and sometimes they made the person cut the audio themselves. So there's some maps where like the audio overlaps and they don't fix it. So they'll oh, say the line no. and then the line will just happen again and it's like, wait, what's happening? <gasps> no. Oh, no. <laughs> but that was like much, much older school. I think people realized like, hey, this sounds bad actually. Maybe we should put an audio track in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that kind of gave rise to the next one, which is a studio, which what do you guys think a studio is? It's probably like a group of people. Uh, s- yeah, yeah, a set group exactly. of people making them together consistently. Really, yeah. a worm and a map are the ones that are the, like the trip you up kind of ones. The studio is pretty much like, yeah, it's a group that like they seek out editors or editors can apply to be in it. And then mm. they post their own maps that like, oh, only people from the studio could make this. And that's how they get like the style consistency or like a lot of times it'll be based on a theme or a series. Same thing with maps. Like I know I was in like, probably 30 studios usually they would make like cool we made three videos and then we're never gonna post again <laughs> i can't believe that amv makers made multi-channel networks before youtube did. Uh, yeah actually that was a i looked up a bunch of old youtube features and there was a old youtube feature that was like a group feature where someone could yeah, create a group yeah. and add people to it so that's how studios first started but then they completely got rid of that and they were like cool we're going to make a channel. <laughs> yeah. And now all of you guys are on this channel, except you have no access to it. <sighs> Carter, what the hell is this next one? An IC? Yeah. I might even be getting the name wrong, because this is just the name my friend used to use for it, which uh, she called it an Iron Chef. So an IC is like a short competition that editors would do with each other, where like, oh, each editor would have exactly two hours to make a video. All them, it could be up to like three, five AMV people. jams. Yeah, exactly. AMV so you'd have jam. like just a very short amount of time. Either you could do whatever. You could pick a specific song to edit to. I know what me and my friend used Your to do. Your mystery ingredient is one One Piece clip. <laughs> exactly. I know what uh, <laughs> me and my friend used to do is she would send me just a song and be like, "We're gonna do an icy right now," and I'd be like, "Oh, okay." I guess. Oh I'll be Jesus! <laughs> I'm eating dinner, but okay. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, what she would do is just, like, we'd get, like, another one of our friends to judge it and be like, who made the better AMV? And that was actually, I think that's some of the funnest, like, type of thing, because I know uh, MIPS Aww. would tend to get, collab- or, like, um, competitive a lot, because mm-hmm. people would yeah. feel bad that they got left out of it. But um, with Iron Chefs, it's just you and a bunch of your close friends, and it's like, cool, we're going to fight each other now. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to throw this Narusasu at you. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about just AMVs as gifts between friends. Because that isn't really, mm-hmm. like, uh, that is a giant community aspect that I think is still there today. But I know um, pretty much for all of my friends' birthdays when I was a teenager, like, I'd get them presents. But I'd also make, like, a special AMB for them. Aww. And it was just nice. Like, people, I'm assuming they liked it. They said they did. <laughs> <laughs> but I also had people, like. They're listening to this now, like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I hated that AMB you made me, actually. No. But um, I know I had like a ton of people who like I didn't really know that well on the internet, and like when my birthday came around, I'd have like three AMV sitting for me, like, "Hey Carter, happy oh, birthday!" Wow. And I'm like, "Oh my god, we talked twice. Thank you." It's so kind. That's really That's sweet. So sweet. Yeah, it was really really nice, and I got so many Naruto ones. <laughs> Tease, make me an AMV for my birthday. Okay. Oh god, that's like not even a week away. <laughs> Time to learn how to do video editing. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's an Eskel fan cam. <laughs> it's a Pui Pui Molkar AMV. <laughs> With uh, uh, Shut Up and Drive by Rihanna. Uh, no, I was going to say two trucks. Stop, trons. no. <laughs> two trucks, it's two trucks. Okay, two trucks. <laughs> two tr- no, no, Molkars don't have sex, No. <laughs> They just get made at the factory like they do in robots. Yeah, they get felted together with lots of love. Mole cars don't have sex. How could you? Mole cars don't have sex. A hard mole political cars don't statement. Fuck. Somebody out there has drawn mole car porn. Stop I know it! Stop it! it. <laughs> you are re- like releasing energy into this world that I am not fond of. Have you listened to this podcast? That's my singular job. 
<laughs> I'm here to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> like for Molkars. <laughs> Pour one out for Molkar fucking. Oh, stop, Ina. Oh, no. I don't want to, though. You started it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at your look at your actions. <laughs> Sit with your consequences. <laughs> Carter, please continue. <laughs> and like a lot of like the old community was based on like a lot of the old YouTube features, which I like have gone away and it made me very, very sad because now YouTube is just kind yeah. of like a uniform nightmare. Mm. Which I hate. YouTube sucks now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there used to be like channel comment sections instead of just like commenting on videos. So you could just talk mm-hmm. directly to somebody on their channel, and it was so nice. That's how I made, like, all of my internet friends. Because, again, I didn't know anybody who knew anime in real life. So all of my mm-hmm. anime friends up until, like, I was uh, 14, 15, I only knew because we commented on each other's YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. That's literally how I met my first girlfriend, was we, like, made friends through, like, another AMV editor and would, like, comment on each other's channels. Wow! Oh. The thing I honestly miss the most is not even that, but just, like, I miss custom background art. Yeah. Yes. Even just custom colors. Yeah, me too. Like, just give me something, Susan, please. please. What, you don't want to just switch between dark mode and light mode for the rest of your life? I'm so tired of the minimalist landscape of the internet. I love... Bring back GeoCity. Yeah. I love opulence. I was watching a video to, like, find all these old YouTube features, and, like, they referred to it as, like, oh, YouTube just wanted an, a more uniform look. I was like, shut up! <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Because I mean, it's weird, right? Because trying to explain what old YouTube was like to people who didn't experience... It was almost like a fusion with MySpace mm-hmm. is, the, is the closest thing I can like it It literally into. was a social media platform, like, pretty much, yeah. that you could just post videos on also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's what, that was my first social media, was just talking to people on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube used to have a friend feature, which I forgot about, which is how, like, I think I made a lot of my friends, which was, like, we'd yeah. just friend, randomly friend other AMV makers, and I'd be like, oh, a friend? Hello? Oh, my God, annotations. Hello? Oh. Rest in peace, annotations. I miss hey, rest AMV. in peace, crowd made uh, captions. They just got rid of that, too, which is awful. So sad. Yeah. Which. That's just a whole nother load of BS because people would literally do it to like caption into other languages. But yeah, like, yeah. it's an accessibility. That's a can issue. of worms. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, down with YouTube. Annotations, they would do that too, where like if someone made like a story like AMV or something, like they would like yeah. caption different parts of it. Or if like, like in a lot of older, cheesier AMVs, they'd be like the character's dialogue. Aww. So now yeah. there's so many videos that just don't make sense because they took out like something that someone used your platform as like a tool to make their video wow. yeah exactly but on, on with uh like youtube features and stuff youtube also did like it did and it didn't do a lot of things and one of them specifically was like uh you could just do like fucking whatever in your videos besides music if you put music in your video you're going to jail <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like i remember specifically like in a lot of studios, too, so it'd be, like, a giant group of people, they'd be like, hey, do you want to edit, like, full yaoi porn into our AMVs? Yeah, <laughs> we're all 13. <laughs> That's great. No! I watched so many, too. I was not a good child. I watched so many, and I was like, wow, I love this. Literally a hentai AMV in front of me. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah, and then the same thing with, like, this is more of, like, a user-based problem, but, like, Anybody that used fan art in their AMVs, and I'm super guilty of this too, just would not use credit. Or like, mm-hmm. yeah. people would credit music for the most part, but even then sometimes not, because that was like the big issue with copyright. But it was like, hey. Or people would credit Google. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Literally, because uh, I know when I was like searching for art when I was editing, a lot of times I would just look up Google and look up high res images, or I'd go on like Zero Chan or Pixiv. And just pick like random oh pictures. Which no, is bad. shame on you. Don't do that. But I get it because you don't. You don't understand. Yeah. You don't know better. The worst thing too is, was I was an artist and I still did this. Oh, geez. <laughs> so that's definitely my own fault. But that's part of the reason I stopped making them too. Is like no, I, I like I like my, the way I do editing, but I can't do it without fan art. So I'm not. But I'm not going to edit fan art anymore. Which means I have to edit MMVs. Which means I need a lot of time <laughs> torrenting everything on the internet. Every single anime ever was torrented. Because also, unless yeah. you torrented it, like, if you just, like, downloaded it from, like, YouTube or, like, Kiss Anime, all the time it would just, like, still have, like, the website logo or, like, the uh, the captions still on. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I know with like a lot of my friends that used to drive them crazy because I didn't care that much and I'd edit AMVs with captions and they'd yell at me that it looked bad and I was like, well, I don't feel like downloading a torrent app to my computer actually. You gotta work with what you Mm -hmm. have. And I mean, like we talked about it last week, but like the whole experience, right, of like, if you were fortunate enough to be able to purchase like dvds of an anime there are four episodes on that if you're trying to make like a bleach amv and there's like a hundred plus episodes like no Mm -hmm. absolutely not and like i think a lot of that is a a reason why you see such like low fidelity footage being used in amvs it's because you're getting copies of copies of copies Mm -hmm. at best sometimes registered hypercam too (laughs) stop no (laughs) Yeah, I think I think that's actually the reason why I didn't watch Naruto was I bought a box set to edit with and there were five episodes in it and I paid like twenty dollars for it. Boo. Yep. And I was like, well, yep. I guess I'm not gonna watch Naruto. <laughs> yeah. It's expensive. It's but expensive. The one thing I really, really wanted to bring, because I feel like people don't know this specifically, you know how everybody always makes fun of Bring Me to Life AMVs? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Do you know why that was like such a popular song? Why? YouTube used to have this feature where if you had copyrighted music, you could, like, pick from a list of non-copyright songs to replace it. And Bring Me to Life was, like, the main one people would pick. Wow. Because it was the Interesting. only good song. Interesting. Smart move on Evanescence's part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that's Or their, I guess, their label. Not so much them, I but think their label's it was, part. It was Bring Me to Life and their other song, Going Under, were used in like a thousand, a- not even a thousand, that's such a small number, like every single yeah. AMV from that era. Because mm-hmm. if you just got copyright stricken, all the other songs, and like Paralyzer, mm-hmm. like those three songs in particular were in every single AMV because it was like you have no other option of music to choose from. Wow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. Fun facts, because it makes me sad and people make fun of it, because I really like Evanescence. <laughs> it's also a good song. It's, it's like, a I know good we make song. fun of it a lot. It's yeah. a good song. It is, it is. We do not appreciate Amy Lee's incredible vocal talent enough. Literally, the part that people make fun of, too, is against her will, was, like, the guy from, like, 12 Stones who was doing, like, the, can't wake up. She didn't want that in it. Her label was like, no, this needs to sound more masculine. We're gonna add another guy into your song. Really? Cowards. Yeah. Mm. So that's my Evanescence corner of this episode. But all of that kind of leads into, like, the newer YouTube, which is, if mm-hmm. you can't already tell, I'm really not a fan of, it's also, like, part of the reason I stopped making MVs was obviously I was going to college, I needed to focus on stuff, I wanted to just kind of stop doing it anyway. But, like, YouTube changed so much that I just didn't want to be on it anymore. <laughs> mm. Uh-huh. Because, like, so much of YouTube now is, like, so focused on monetization and targeted advertising like, yeah. they take away so many options, like, to be creative and replace it with, like, you have to conform to, like, what our channel style is. Like, have you seen that list of, like, words that YouTubers can't say or else they'll get demonetized? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it changes constantly. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, most YouTubers couldn't even say the word coronavirus mm-hmm. or they would receive demonetization. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's not sensible. I understand that there is, like, a point behind it but some of it is just absolute nonsense or the whole like you can't swear in the first minute of the video like what do you think that achieves yeah <laughs> what do you what a do you think that sense does of security that's what it achieves yeah. yeah and it's all for advertisers mm-hmm. it is all 100 percent for advertisers yep. yeah so anybody making a youtube video can't actually post whatever they want to post they have to post it like according yeah. to very strict guidelines which like i'm not saying yeah. no rules should be in place like, I'm glad that... Actually, I think people are still getting away with editing full yaoi porn into their videos, but probably not as much oh, as Oh, yeah, there's to. still pornography on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, I can't say fuck in the first sentence of my video. And obviously, AMVs, like, can't be monetized Cowards. anyway. Like, you were talking about that last episode. Like, there's yeah. no way people can, like... Like, record labels can get money out of, like, oh, hey, you made this cool Orn High School Host Club video. WMG has entered the chat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, man, it just sucks. YouTube does so much with, like, just conforming to, like, you have to be this or else you can't post. Like, the thing that killed me the most is I went into my old videos and, like, I couldn't even find where my videos were because it used to be a section that says my videos. But it's now a section called a uh, YouTube Studio. And yep. instead yeah. of videos, it now says content, oh. which made me want to barf. I was so like YouTube. We're not posting blogs. Yeah, 
it's not I, like rebranding I, that's the artist content <laughs> makes me it just makes my skin crawl i'm not a content creator i'm i'm an artist i'm a filmmaker i'm an editor you know mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah oh it just drives me crazy but it sucks too i mean to youtube me. has been a huge push behind that whole movement that has really delegitimized the effort it takes to put into art mm-hmm. Because YouTube so prizes, and I mean, Instagram is guilty of it, Twitter is guilty of it, but I I do genuinely believe that YouTube was a huge portion of it in, like, laying down this landscape and foundation for that landscape that said, it's not about quality, it's about quantity. Mm -hmm. And it has just, the effects of that are going to ripple for so, so long. And the same thing, too, with, like, a... I don't know entirely everything about YouTube's algorithm system. I know a lot of it's based no on... No one does. Yeah. Uh, what I know, at least, is, like, it's a lot based on your recent watch history. So, like, if I don't want a yeah. certain YouTuber showing up a lot, I'll just delete all their videos. And then it's like, hey, they show yeah. up less, but they still show up. Um, a, a lot of times for me, when I go to my front page, it's usually people I am not subscribed to. And I'm mm-hmm. subscribed yep. to a lot of AMV editors. I almost never get amvs in my recommended yeah like That's there was so one day weird. specifically where um i spent like a few nights just watching amvs because i was like hey i'm nostalgic i want to watch a bunch and that was my full youtube history but still the algorithm was like no you want to watch minecraft youtubers that's it <gasps> yeah <laughs> Because that's where the money is. That's what's advertiser friendly, and that's what YouTube can make money off of. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, like, I miss so many videos that people are actually still making. Like, I don't know how many people I'm subscribed to still are making videos because it's so hard to actually find when they're uploading. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I, I would say my YouTube is split between artists that I follow and then, you know, various other content whether that be ordinary sausage or various gameplay youtubes or commentary channels and it's like if i have even a few days where i don't watch the art channels that i follow they completely disappear from my recommended i have to actively seek them out again exactly literally and it's like what what is the point of subscription youtube if you're not going to alert me and like they have two different tiers of like oh this is our anti youtube episode i'm gonna yeah. stop now because i could go on forever about oh i have YouTube so much more about sucks. <laughs> community page is absolute hell for me too because i wanted to like make a post for instance like on our podcast account with our whole 34 subscribers just being like hey guys <laughs> sorry i had to upload this video four times like sorry to clog your feet or whatever but i can't even do that because unless you have a thousand or more subscribers you can't post in your community bro my community can't be 34 people thank you very much that sucks so bad instagram won't let you have a swipe up in your story unless you have i think it's like ten thousand followers or something it's like I hate social media. It's a bane on my existence. Uh, yeah, pretty much. My whole life recently has just been social media hell because I've been trying to brand myself on different platforms and try to like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, post my art here, post my film here, and it's like, wow, I hate all of these platforms, but I have to use them if I want to. Hey, get how my does stuff Vimeo feel about AMV? Yeah, <laughs> AMV community moved to Vimeo. Did it even? Because that was actually one of the things I was going to bring up. Is like, I don't exactly know where the amv community is anymore like i know it's still i think on it's YouTube. on anime music okay. but like i don't i'm not familiar with anime i've music never even videos. heard about org. that and until like, you guys mentioned it last week apparently it's like the biggest repository for amvs but like i don't know how community based that is i don't know if it's just like a a dump and go kind of situation you know and it's like twitter is not very hospitable to amvs because if you don't have so there's a twofold issue with twitter in that First of all, you get capped out at, like, 2 minutes and 20 seconds or whatever. And then also, Twitter's video hosting is absolutely abysmal. And if your video is, like, 10 seconds long, it's never going to buffer properly. So unless you're, like, a major, major media conglomerate that's consistently posting videos, your videos are almost always going to be trash quality for, like, the first 30 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, every social media, like, YouTube is really, like, the only main social media that is the one for videos like it's supposed to be for creators but now it's just for like "Uh we want money well and the issue too with trying to make another video platform we talked about this i think in our propaganda episodes because dan olson of folding ideas made a really great point when he was talking about vidme which was a, a competitor to youtube for a while that was trying to garner a lot of successes it's all of the people who you kicked off of your ship he says 
that are going to go onto the new rescue ship first. And, like, those people who got kicked off, like, the big ship Mm -hmm. were probably kicked off for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, like, before you can even get, like, creatives in on these spots, a lot of times they're they're inhabited by nazis before anyone else oh yeah exactly i don't trust like any new social media site that comes out like i still hate all the main ones but it's like i don't want to go to a new one i feel that yeah. completely yeah i know um, yeah. with uh, a lot of the changes too i feel like there's been a lot of creative changes that have taken creativity away from the users for the most part it all mm-hmm. comes down yeah. to like the editor obviously like if the editor has the passion for it like they can use whatever tools and skill sets they have to make whatever they want but there's like it, this actually kind of, this is kind of dramatic, but it horrified me a little bit. Like in one of my film classes, one of my professors showed me this editing app and he's like, yeah, this is going to take away people's jobs because people can just like, it, you just click a button and it like auto edits videos. And he was showing me how it worked. And I was like, it, it doesn't edit that. Like it edits well though. Like it, not perfectly. Is it the new one that automatically finds out the beats in the music and like can edit to that? I, maybe i don't even know because this was a few years ago and he showed me this and i guarantee oh, okay. there's like a ton of other ones and like even because i know i know that there have been a lot of youtubers who have been advertising for a specific video editing software that is like free and new and one of the like key features of it is like it shows you the timestamps for the music track you lay down of like significant beats or whatever so that you can edit to that perfectly and it's like oh, oh okay I-, I guess now the one he showed me was literally like he shook his phone and it edited the video what Ooh. yeah it was insane i was like wow okay cool i love that robots can do my jobs that's so <laughs> weird. A lot of that- good for them they also deserve to be able to be creative i love you you funky little robots Congratulations. universal basic in come now it's like a hand in hand issue too because like this is good for accessibility because if there's more editing apps that are free then more people who wouldn't be able to afford sony vegas or after effects are able to edit but on the other hand a lot of these apps are so like pre-edited that you can't really Mm -hmm. you have no creative say in what you're doing Mm -hmm. you have like okay i can make it one of these three colors i'm not going to learn how to color correct i'm just going to put a filter on it and I'm just going to make it do random shakes and stuff, which doesn't necessarily look bad, yeah. which but is it's what pretty we see lazy. And there's not necessarily yeah. a problem with that either, if that's the kind of editing somebody likes to do. Mm-hmm. But there's not as much creative freedom to it, which I think there should be for people who want to explore that in editing. Mm-hmm. Like, God, I yeah. wish Adobe was not money. That's <laughs> the bane of my existence. <laughs> that's... I, mean... I had an experience with Adobe this week that made me so fucking angry. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That no, they charge know, you a yeah. cancellation fee now. Yeah, it really. And the really cancellation sucks. fee is a percentage of the remaining time left on your plan. And I was like, "Are you fucking that kidding me?" Up. Anyway, if you're having trouble canceling your Adobe subscription and are facing an astronomical cancellation fee, here's a fun tip for you: you can just change your plan to whatever you want, and uh, then contact Adobe and cancel the plan. And because you're within the first 14 days of your quote unquote new plan, you get a total refund on that money that you had to spend to cancel your plan. Good. Fuck that. Good. That's bullshit. I th- I think that's really what Carter you were just saying is really prevalent in like TikToks and stuff like that. Like it's really exciting mm-hmm. to see how like fan cam culture has evolved and stuff like that. But also at the same time, because so often our fan cams made on apps like TikTok, we kind of see these tropes forming mm-hmm. within fan cam culture. Like obviously like the sparkle edits are coming back again and yeah. sometimes we get some fun color uh filters going on and I feel like, like once, like what you're saying exactly. It's exciting to see that there's this new generation of people, but also because it's made on the same apps that hold these very, uh, rigid structures. It's mm. it becoming almost filled with a trope in a way because yeah. we just keep seeing the same thing over and over again because the accessibility to that app is big. However, the creative aspect of it can be done well, but at the yeah. end of the day, it just it's the same thing over and over again. It's overshadowed. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. there's like, yeah. there's been editing trends on YouTube that like, I remember like, uh, back when like Dang and Rapa first became really big, like mm-hmm. editing trends really, really switched over to a lot of more like After Effects kind of things. Mm-hmm. And you saw mm-hmm. a lot of the same types of edits with almost any video you watch, but that there was still a lot of creative freedom in what people could do or what their editing style was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't really have like, you can still kind of have a style in an app like TikTok, but mm-hmm. it's very, very conformed to like, the, that program yeah. you can mm-hmm. only make it in tiktok style and a little bit of your influence 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, that's not even an issue with like TikTok itself, right? Because we have seen, you know, editors who like go to TikTok to show off their editing skills, right? And like, they're able to play a little bit outside of it, but it's, it's the algorithm of these sites that really, really damage creativity more than anything. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's a, it's a quantity over quality and gee, it's a lot easier to pump out something that is basically just a process of hitting buttons as opposed to something where it's like you're really sitting down and doing a a time intensive task, Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's always like creatives are always going to be creatives. They're always going to want to do something, but it's like the Mm -hmm. tools that are given to them is what they're going to shape everything out of. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if they're given a shitty tool to make something with, like mm-hmm. they're not going to be able to show like the true like what they can do as an editor like someone mm-hmm. who might yeah. just like want to edit tiktok videos on their phone like might not think they're a good editor just because like they haven't been able to sit down at like an actual program to do it the one positive about just like the changes over time is just like there's obviously because there's been new programs in use more people have been using after effects like sony vegas has gone down a lot in programs rest in peace king yeah mm-hmm. i miss you but um, <laughs> listen, it's me and that pirated software. We go back for so long. <laughs> they mean so much to me. Get. How do you feel about tattoos? Good. G- get Sony get Vegas yourself tattoo? a Sony Vegas tattoo. You know what? I'm, I might. That's a really good idea, actually. I would absolutely... That would be a really cute tattoo. Literally, like some software logos I that you I cannot tell you use. how pe- people in my major like made fun of Sony Vegas so bad. And I'd be like, haha, yeah, that program. <laughs> listen Aww. i think if we have learned anything with this podcast the most important thing is to like fuck cringe culture mm-hmm. like if you are having fun and you are not hurting anyone then like enjoy what you love mm-hmm. and and take pride in it too because like that happiness and that enjoyment can be so hard to find but you deserve it mm-hmm. like if watching naruto makes you happy do not let anyone make fun of you mm. fuck them Enjoy it. I know we sometimes Cash are just haters. Really wants me to watch Naruto. <laughs> I don't. I don't care if you watch Naruto. I don't really. But like, I know like when I was growing up, like you got made fun of if you watched anime. Like, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know, kids are cruel, whatever. But like, I think adults who grow up and then shame their younger selves who are just trying to enjoy things and have fun is like it's really kind of sad in a way. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. growing up means taking on more responsibility and being, you know, more thoughtful, more rational. But it doesn't mean stopping enjoying things. It doesn't mean that I can't buy a Garfield phone and put it over my lamp and look at him with his beautiful transcendence every day. Like, exactly. you should be allowed to enjoy things, including Sony Vegas. <laughs> Thank you for this validation. I'm going to get that tattoo tomorrow. Actually, yeah. after I get my second shot, I'll wait two weeks and then get my tattoo. Yeah! <laughs> Gotta be safe. Uh, the newer AMV tropes are... I actually had to look these up because I didn't know the names for any of them. Wow. Like, I... Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I feel very old. Because I know the style, but, like, the first one was Marginal, which I've never heard the name for in my life. But it's, like... Uh, text effects, glitches, graphics and shapes. It's usually kind of an edgy AMV, but it's like, oh, it's very fast paced, fast movements. Very like, mm-hmm. it, it looks like it was made in After Effects is what I can mm-hmm. basically say mm-hmm. about it. <laughs> and then with that comes like typography AMVs, which is like, that's more when like the camera tracks the text, mm-hmm. which like mm-hmm. obviously using the 3D camera and After Effects and the cuts are usually to the song lyrics rather than the beat itself. Mm hmm. This one is the only one I'm giving you an AMV that I did not watch because I could not find a single lo-fi AMV. So I found a Bart Simpson lo-fi edit for you. Wow, thank you. Hell yep. yes. So lo-fi is basically just like you put like a, an aesthetic filter over it, which I guess mm-hmm. works really good in like the Instagram age of like people just really, really like old film aesthetics or just like, yeah. yeah. Lo-fi anime beats. Oh my exactly. God. Making anything look like it's on a VHS tape. Yep. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that specifically, too, like, they literally use lo-fi beats, like, as the background. It's usually not with, like, a song with lyrics for the Interesting. most part. And then, this is a weird name for a genre to me, but it's just called edgy. <laughs> Same. So, I literally wrote in my note, like, you get it. But, like, edgy is, like, you use a lot of smooth transitions, flashes, like, shaky camera. It's, like, dark and gritty. Like, usually there's a lot of shadow mm-hmm. in it. 
He said, yeah. put this one in for you because it's the Shindora Hidoro AMV. Shinjamin, my love. It is with 21 pilots, <laughs> but also it's Shin, so it's okay. <laughs> and uh, the last one I wanted to just say is like, I do not know the name of this type of AMV. I looked everywhere to find some kind of title for it. So I came up with a stupid name, which is just like a storytelling, but done in After Effects. Okay. So that's okay. just like, uh, like the AMV I sent you guys, Fate Matrix, kind of like mm-hmm. that, where it's like, oh, we're using a 3D camera to move around and like make it look like all these graphics and all these other anime are part of the main anime you're editing. Mm-hmm. Oh. And it's a manipulation to like make everything flow together and look like it's part of the same thing. Mm. So mm. it's like a within the universe kind of thing. Okay. And just a lot of trends I'm seeing is like a lot of smoother transitions, a lot of a lot more camera like panning and zooming and like even just like the 3D camera moving around like there's a lot more movement and a lot more flow and I think that is like a program thing. It's just a <laughs> style people like better. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because older AMBs used to be a lot more clunky and a lot more like, "Oh cool, I just learned how to use this sparkle effect. I'm going to throw it at you 10 times." And it doesn't seem like people are really doing that. <laughs> rainbow as much filter, anymore. rainbow filter, rainbow filter. <laughs> oh, I didn't even bring up the rainbow filter. God, I love rainbow filter. Don't worry, Me we too. talked about it. One out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's an important filter. It's so important. Heritage effect. <laughs> World rainbow heritage filter. effect. <laughs> the one common thing I've seen is like pop music has been like the music to use in AMVs. Like obviously back in the day it was more like yeah. Kesha and oh my queen. <laughs> but now it's yeah go ahead tell us what some old pop music is yeah listen you were there you know <laughs> but i mean like marina and the diamonds oh, yeah, yeah. kesha avril lavigne oh, the playlists. veronica's exactly uh, but nowadays it's like since pop music has changed the editing has kind of changed along with that because a lot of pop music now billy is- eilish amvs exactly it's there's it's more edgy pop it's electronic there's like trap in mm-hmm. it there's more rap and pop so it's a lot, a lot of AMBs now lean more towards, that's why edgy is a genre all in itself, is because more pop music is edgy. So more of the yeah. music that's like the big music nowadays is like what people are editing to. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it seems like there's a lot more emphasis on like technically impressive than there is on like just goofing around in Sony Vegas. It's almost like yeah. you can't fail anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, Literally. There's... Well, I think so much of that too has to do with the fact that like, Look at how skilled young artists are today as compared to, like, us when we were younger. And Mm -hmm. it's because there are so many more resources available to them. Mm -hmm. So, like, back back in my day, like, when I was a kid and it's like, I wanted to learn how to do an effect. Like, I couldn't look on Google for that. First of all, Google was a thing you had to be good at to find answers to stuff. And now it's like, if you want to figure out how to do something in After Effects, congratulations. You just have to type in, like, the Vegas thing and... 800 youtube tutorials will pop up yep. and yeah literally you're good was, you're golden you when know? i was trying to find like an amv example for like the marginal i just looked up amv glitch and first off half of them were undertale like glitch au's which i didn't know what that meant so <laughs> <laughs> and the other half were like after effects tutorials and like oh here's how to do a yeah. glitch effect i'm like thank you but also i'm looking for actual amvs <laughs> but that's like a lot of editors like I, I say that there's like a less doki doki literature club AMV probably. Exactly. Uh, I I say that there's less community on YouTube now, but there's also a lot more people who are willing to help other people like in their videos because yeah. they mm-hmm. can't really do it like just talking to someone one on one anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah. cool. I'm gonna make a, a tutorial on how to use After Effects so that young kids can figure out how to do it. So I'm seeing a lot of young editors who are like using like After Effects as industry software. <laughs> We're going from real social interaction, even happening online, to parasocial relationships in every possible aspect, and it's not good. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I do prefer, like, just asking, like, an editor, like, oh, hey, how did you do this effect? That's really, really cool. Because it yeah. also helps you foster a relationship with somebody. Like, like I said, yeah, that's exactly. how I made all my first internet friends, was like, whoa, I love this Naruto AMV. I can't get Naruto out of my head now. Fraud. <laughs> He's living here for free. <laughs> I'm gonna go think You're about Naruto more than not watch it. <laughs> You're gonna cosplay Naruto and I'm gonna see you and be like, fraud, yeah. liar, cheater. <laughs> I get kicked out of the convention. <laughs> I, I'm like, I find a megaphone. The I'm, Carter I'm is cosplaying you. Naruto. <laughs> you know that one picture of like the Sasuke in handcuffs being put in a police car because that's actually me in the future? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
that's pretty much all I have is just like I don't I do think some of the changes like obviously more on the like YouTube side of things and the corporate side of things are not great but I think that like yeah. I- I'm glad that people are still making AMVs despite that because mm-hmm. even though a lot of them like there's a lot more emphasis on uniformity like people are still holding up a craft that like honestly part of the reason I really wanted to do this episode is it's really hard to archive AMVs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like because of uh, like I said, my most popular AMV got taken down because of a copyright strike, and mm-hmm. it's like yeah. I can't re-upload it. That's the song I edited to. I can't really replace it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like there's no like I can't prove to somebody that I did that mm-hmm. <laughs> for the most part. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard to archive things. Where like oh, because also the copyright strike didn't happen until years later. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like everything i have on youtube could get copyright strike like within the next like 10 years and i wouldn't even know about it yeah so it's very hard to well and it's like preserve. once there are three strikes your channel's done everything mm-hmm. on it gets deleted and it's gone yeah exactly yep. so it's very amvs are something that i think are extremely hard to preserve and i don't think yeah. fandom spaces really understand how important they are put mm. them on a flash drive put them on a dvd yeah i like i'm not even kidding like there's there's something that's really terrifying to me about how much of our history is on the internet but doesn't exist in a physical form in any fashion and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i know it sounds doomsday e but like my brain is constantly worried about like what happens when those surfers go down like it's yeah. gone it's lost yeah. forever in no oh. people are constantly <laughs> like roasting me for buying physical copies of stuff but like i'm Oh, always buying physical stop copies for that yeah. very reason. Me you know? too. I own yeah. like any movie that I really, really care about. I own on DVD because it's yep. like I'm not going to yeah. trust the internet to have it forever. Literally, yep. the reason yep. like, uh, like a, every movie that I bought my Criterion subscription for like is going away in like a week, and I'm like, cool, I have to binge them all for the yeah. next five days. I feel that big time. Well, I love like I, I think sale. about when Apple Music finally took over iTunes and like. To join up with Apple Music, it went through and overwrote everything in your library, and there were tons of people online who were talking about, like, once-in-a-lifetime concert recordings that they had on their iTunes library were destroyed. They were gone, and they didn't have the CDs anymore, because everything said, get rid of your physical copies, everything's digital now, and it's like, that's just, they can't access it anymore. Mm -hmm. They can't find it. It's gone. Yeah. It terrifies me. Ugh. It's awful. On that wonderfully positive note. (laughs) Yeah. Carter, if people want to find more of your work, where can they get you at? Uh, you can hit me at Carter's on pretty much all social media. That's C-A-R-T-Y-R-S. And uh, my film account, if you want to follow me to see what kind of filmmaking I produce, is at Carter Cav uh, underscore film. So C-A-R-T-E-R-C-A-V underscore film. If you want to get in contact with us or reach out to us or learn more about us, you can find all of that information on our website. Our website is authorsnotepod.com. If you want to reach out to us on Twitter, we're over there at authorsnotepod. We are also on YouTube and on Instagram, all under those wonderful same names. If you want to support the show, the best way you can do that is by sharing us with a friend, leaving a comment or a review on whatever podcast app you are listening to us through we also have a patreon and if you join the patreon at every single level you can help decide what an episode of the month is going to be you get access to exclusive bonus episodes and a special once of the once of the month episode called show and tell where tisa and i talk about things we love helping us out that way really helps us to keep the show going and be able to dedicate more time to it and, you know, get cool improvements in the works for you guys that this can be the best show it possibly can be that Tisa and I can create. If you want to find more of me, I am Cass, and I'm pretty much everywhere on the internet at Valhethella. That's V-A-L-H-E-T-H-E-L-L-A. Tisa, if people want to find more of you, where can they get you at? Uh, sorry, I was picking my nose. (laughs) (laughs) I'm leaving that in. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) You can find me on Twitter at Vicunia. That's V-I-C-U-N-A-D. And if you enjoyed our theme music, that was James Wyulo. And you can look him up on Bandcamp under James Y. And Cass, 
Who did our cover art? Our cover art is done by my wonderful pal and friend and son, Jala. She is soon to be my Monster Hunter hunting partner. Hell yeah, big dumps. You can find more of her work on Twitter at Nyalia. So that's N-Y-A-L-L-I-E-S-T. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us, by the way, Carter. I know I didn't say that oh, soon enough, you. but thank you so much. This was delightful. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Until next time, go enjoy some AMVs before they're gone forever. <laughs> you never know when it could happen. Don't forget to wear your mask. And as always, be safe. Bye. 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 Bye.